This year, Starbucks is celebrating the 20th anniversary of the pumpkin spice latte. Today, pumpkin spice has become a fall phenomenon, and it's raking in profits even Starbucks could not have foreseen. As Bella Diaz explains. The pumpkin spice latte, it's a treat that's become practically synonymous with the fall season. Put a little cinnamon in there, put a little nutmeg in too. It's a pumpkin-y swirl onto a beautiful, beautiful beverage. I love it. Today, what started out with a mouthful of pumpkin pie and a shot of espresso at Starbucks headquarters has turned into a full-fledged, multi-million dollar success story with more than 600 million PSLs sold in just two decades. Now, 20 years after the first pumpkin spice latte made its way into Starbucks stores, pumpkin spice has become the real star of the show, taking on a life of its own in everything from baked goods to pumpkin spice flavored beer. Even skincare companies have jumped on the bandwagon. From 2021 to 2022 alone, spice company McCormick reported a 40% increase in new pumpkin spice flavored products across the globe. It's part of a tradition. It's included in movies. And pumpkins also created a nice culture, which I'm appreciating with pumpkin spice donuts, drinks, uh, everything, soaps, bars, everything. And it's that sense of tradition, in part, that has the pumpkin spice industry on the path to becoming worth $1.1 billion globally by the end of the year. Research from Future Market Insights found that social media, whether it's Instagram oh, baby, or TikTok, has also played a huge role in driving that trend. Spending on pumpkin products in the U.S. has steadily climbed annually over the past five years, from just under $564 million in 2019 to more than $802 million this year so far. But it's unclear how much longer these businesses will have to savor those profits. Unit sales for the popular spice have actually been slightly down for the past two years. And some experts suggest the market's oversaturation with pumpkin spice may be giving consumers a bit of a stomach ache. And it might just be time for a break. Data shows retailers responding by subtly reducing the number of pumpkin spice flavored snacks they sell, but that doesn't account for all the coffee shops and restaurants that still take part in the pumpkin mania each year. Ew. So does this signal the beginning of the end for pumpkin spice? Analysts say that's unlikely, at least in the near future. Isabella Diaz, CGTN. The beginning of the end? No way. For all things pumpkin spice, we have with us now Buck Wise. He's CEO of Closing Day Agency, a digital marketing firm. Thanks very much. I see you that smirk. You have some experience with, with pumpkin spice in your background as well. Tell me how that, you got involved in all this. Yeah, sure. For two years, I worked on the pumpkin spice latte campaign. We were the agency of record. And I got to tell you, there's nothing better than the pumpkin phenomenon. People go crazy. In fact, I spent six months, Sean, I spent six months studying who is the core persona, who is the core drinker of a pumpkin spice latte? All you had to do was call me. It's it's me. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> and now no, we, you, you know, can't see, but now we have like Twinkies up there, cereal, ice cream, I, yogurt. What's the key ingredient behind the success of this flavor, do you think? I knew you were gonna ask that. We didn't spend millions of dollars in research not to answer that question for you, Sean. The, the truth is that it isn't really the flavor of pumpkin spice, but it's an emotional behavior or a sense that the consumer gets when they drink it. When you smell that pumpkin flavor, it brings back the sense of fall, the, the sense of family, the sense of love. It's really more of a feeling and an experience that people get, but really what it is more than anything the younger generation loves the association and the access to the beverage. They love to share it on social media to say that mm. they're a part of something bigger. You know, it really isn't just the taste. It's being a part of what they call, by the way, the PSL movement, pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I like that. You know, it's interesting as you were saying that, I, I, I got to agree. It makes me think. Okay, I'm really old, but I was thinking back to first grade when we had to draw our fall leaves, and I remember drawing pumpkins and, and everything. And so when this does kick in, we've had a hideously long, hot summer. So it does kind of pick you up a bit. That's right. It's the shift into a new season. And we actually drove an increase of 22% increase in sales the year that I worked on Pumpkin Spice Latte because we found that what they really wanted was access to the beverage first. 
So we gave them a little scavenger hunt that allowed them huh. to document the pumpkin spice latte. And by saying, hey, I'm on the good side of FOMO. I know the drink exists and I'm gonna buy the first sip of the season. It actually drove, drove influence and ambassadors to share the drink more than ever. But you're right. Howard Schultz said, we have an issue. McDonald's has a PSL. Dunkin' Donuts has a PSL. <laughs> Yankee Candle has a PSL. How are we going to dominate the PSL? And by the way, don't forget globally, PSL oh, yeah. only launched 10 years ago in Japan. So while the drink's been around 20 years, this year Mexico celebrates the very first pumpkin spice cake. So in every region, everything from Philippines to to Japan, the, the drink takes on sort of its own personality and persona, wow. but it still comes down to that core thing, and you know it, Sean, that it's a feeling somebody gets to say it's the beginning of a new season, and I want to associate and be a part of it. You know, pumpkin spice lattes hit Starbucks stores in August this year, and when it was crazy hot, and places like Dunkin', Krispy Kreme are putting out their fall menus uh, that same month. So let's talk about that. Is it oversaturation? Do you run the risk of simply overdoing something that people like and making them sick of it? Yeah, you know, there's there's two types of consumers when it comes to pumpkin spice. And if I had to truly guess which category you felt in, Sean, you're one of those peripheral consumers, meaning you're not getting this every day before you come to the set and do your global business segment. <laughs> you're what let me guess, once or twice in the season and then you're good to go, right? Oh no, no, man. I think you're barking up the wrong tree, pal. I, I try to get this at least two or three times a week. But I will say there's this one hip little Italian a uh, place near my house where I can get coffee. They're like, no, we don't do pumpkin spice. So I walk around the hip little place to get pumpkin spice. Yes. So I it's am that. So what will cause pizza. this to lose its luster? Yeah, it's like pineapple on pizza. Some people are like, that's a disgrace. You should never put pumpkin spice in a coffee. But you know, the, the market's saturated. The, even Durex condom has a pumpkin spice. Like, where is the madness going to end? Like, right. which, what brand, brands are taking advantage of the senses, the smell, the taste, the sight. People want to experience that fall beverage. And like you said, Sean, they're they're doing it earlier and earlier every single mm -hmm. year. It's like Christmas music. We hear it in October now. So like, they're capitalizing on on that one moment in a season because they know they're going to get a boost in sales for that one fall beverage. It's limited supply. You know what I mean? Right, they right. know that syrup is going to go away. So let's take advantage of it now and drive an increase in sales. You know, from an advertising perspective, you swing for the fences every time, but rarely do you make a connection with consumers like pumpkin spice. What makes a successful marketing campaign? Yeah, it really is one thing, and this is with any marketing campaign. Do you truly know your consumer? And not all consumers, but the one avid pumpkin spice drinker. The more you know who your consumer is, the more you speak their language, and the more you the more you give them access to this information sooner, the quicker you're gonna drive an impact financially on that season, on that beverage, or that product or service. And so Starbucks has done their research and they know the different types of pumpkin spice avid users, and they really are focused on the core drinker of the PSL. Now the PSL that I studied right. years ago, she now has kids, <laughs> but she knows that she can go to Target and she knows that at that Target, they're gonna have her pumpkin spice latte. Now they've got nine other different drinks, of course, the pumpkin spice foam and the right. pumpkin spice double, you know, chocolate latte. Like they just keep adding pumpkin spice flavors every single year. It was kind of like in uh, when people first got into environmentally sensitive or safe fuel, everything was green and that didn't work, you had to move on. But I want to ask you to look into your crystal ball with the pumpkin spice rolling around in there. What is your next prediction, food or otherwise? Yeah, it doesn't go away. It only continues to get bigger. And these are brand these brands are competing to see who can dominate the market first. And so the way they're doing that is by trying to take the core market share first and let them be the mm. advocates in the season to spread the word that PSL is back. I think this is continue. We saw seven years ago, I saw the revenue increasing during the fall. And you know, this is what competitors do. They mimic, right? They mimic what other successful brands are doing. So if a brand can take a hold of the pumpkin season in any way, they're going to continue to do it and drive that emotion of love and family and a new beginning, a new season is beginning. Absolutely. Uh, Buck Wise, thanks so much. Hopefully we'll have you back next year. COVID will be in our rearview mirror and we can decorate this set 
with pumpkin spice and we can try everything. I would love it, man. Let's right. do it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.